Let's take a look at what's in store tonight on Channel One. Kicking off our evening schedule is a retrospective of the best moments from Peter Clement's Just the Job, reminding us just how our new Prime Minister became so popular in the first place. Following that, at 9pm, Megan Wolfe sits down for an exclusive interview with former Prime Minister Jacob Hamilton Mann, in Truth to Power, and she'll be asking him where it all went so horribly wrong. I'll certainly be tuning in for that. Finally tonight, at 10pm, it's a bit of escapism, with Lawrence Blunderclatch's acclaimed action movie, Bullet Man, taking us up to the National Weather Report and closed down at a quarter past midnight. But before all that, it's time to go over to Jeremy Donaldson for tonight's National Nightly News. Good evening, I'm Jeremy Donaldson. Our main headlines tonight. Destination unknown. At the end of Advance's first full week in office, we ask exactly who's leading this charge. Tonight, I'll be discussing what the new future might hold with a leading economist and radical free thinker. With the Assets and Wealth Act on the brink of raising living standards for the vast majority of the country, I'll be asking my guests if we're on the way to a new future. Out with the old, Remington's fist have appointed Sophia Remington as their new CEO. The following photo, taken from our archive, gives us a sense of this influential young firebrand who, at the tender age of 23, becomes the youngest female CEO in history. Sophia Remington has always impressed. She was top of her class at university and graduated with the highest honours, immediately being asked back to lecture. The markets have responded favourably to Sophia's appointment, with stocks rising 30 points in light of the announcement. In her first press conference this afternoon, Sophia announced a children's toy named Mr. Snugglehugs. Sophia promises it'll be all the rage this Christmas, but concerns have been raised about the product's safety. Making a splash. Intrepid scientist Dr. David Wong and marine biologist Ingrid Svorsborg and Horgensford have today set off to explore Dante's taint. The recently discovered cave system was previously thought unreachable, but thanks to a new breakthrough in underwater flower technology, the pair hope to successfully reach the imposing central cavern and the undiscovered plant species it contains. This is, of course, only the latest in a series of successful expeditions for this unlikely pairing. In a joint statement about the dangers their team might face, the pair stated, We will face the plentiful challenges together like we always have. Playing the field. Rumours abound as sporting legend Johnny Hamsleeves is snapped leaving Bush, one of the capital's hottest clubs. The footballer was caught while out celebrating being named Sports Personality of the Year last week, as reported by this very programme. Johnny is seen here with socialite and performance artist Tiffany Lamour, whose recent show Snatched Inside, Inside My Snatch has kept her firmly in the public eye. Could romance be on the cards for these two budding anisters? And grievous bodily charm. With advance promising a radical new position on crime, how afraid should we actually be? I'll be going live around the country to talk with people who've seen the criminal justice system from every perspective. With more and more powers passing to the police, and less and less oversight, are we using an advanced-shaped sledgehammer to crack a nut? All that, a mega move for the group of young actors already experiencing the positive side of the new Assets and Wealth Act firsthand. They'll be talking and performing later. That's all coming up on tonight's National Nightly News. government's swift enactment of the Assets and Wealth Act, we're talking about Advance's first week in office and what the new future holds. Joining me are Katie Brightman, a leading economist, and Alan James, author of Alan James is Right, The Free Man's Guide to Waking Up. Alan, the government certainly haven't dragged their heels on delivering some of the legislation they promised, but what does the Wealth Act mean for us? Nothing, Jeremy. We're still vassal slaves. We're just in prettier cages. A confident dismissal there. Katie Brightman, do you agree? I'm afraid I don't, no. I think that Advance have realised that the current economic system of unlimited, unending growth is untenable, so they're changing things up. There I agree with you. They're moving to the next steps in the grand plan. 
Grand plan, Alan. It's all in my book. Alan James is right, Jeremy. We're to become the great herd. Ignorant, sterile and short-lived. That's what they want. Or perhaps Advance have just realised that if we carry on the way we are, we will destroy ourselves and this planet in a mad orgy of consumption, if you'll excuse the colourful metaphor. <laughs> yes, orgy is the right word. Only it'll be the overlords having an orgy on our poor broken backs. It's all in my book. Alan James is... Shamelessly self-promoting? Katie, how do you think the rest of the world will respond to this new approach? I think they're watching carefully. Advance of the most disruptive threat that the world powers have faced since the last Great War. Yes, Katie's right. War is inevitable. Thank you, but that isn't And this I... will not be a war like we've ever seen before. We're talking millions of deaths. We're talking high-tech weapons that can level entire cities. We're talking... Out of the wrong orifices? Mock me all you like, Jeremy. But when they murder your parents and they poison your food and they take you away to their camps for hypno-brainwashing, who will be laughing then? That might be a great way to sell books, Alan, but you know full well that isn't going to happen in a democracy. Democracy is dead. Yes, advance are radical, and change is always frightening, but the truth is that the Wealth and Assets Act has made more than 90% of the population wealthier and is on target to produce a permanent end to poverty. But what this young lady doesn't understand, Jeremy, is that these are the same people. Maybe they've rebranded, but it's all a little circus act to keep us from seeing the tyrant behind the curtain. That's where you're wrong, Alan. For a start, they've mobilised the youth vote like we've never seen before. You say mobilise, I call it grooming. The grooming of an entire generation to walk happily into eternal bondage. They're like psychic paedophiles. But based on the facts, Katie, what are your predictions? The Assets and Wealth Act is only the first step. Advance now have a historic budgetary surplus, and as well as properly funding our public services, they're already un they're already funneling unprecedented amounts into scientific research and the arts. Or, as I call them in my book, Franken Science and Opie Arts. Like opiates, see? Can we get back to the issue at hand, please, Alan? This is the issue! It's all coming from the water, the chemicals, they're pumping it full of belief juice! Don't get me wrong, I want to see these changes, but only if they're sustainable. If Advance lose their power after spending half of our GDP on dismantling infrastructure, that could be catastrophic. The catastrophe is that they're succeeding. They've got us sat here talking about their puppet show. All right, we're running out of time. Quickly, Alan, um, what does the future look like to you? A bleak space where we've all been figuratively sodomised into submission. Oh, of course. Katie? We might be on the eve of a brave new world. God knows we need some change, but we need to be cautious. Let's walk forwards with our eyes open. Two very different visions of the future there. Alan James, Katie Brightman, thank you for joining me. When we come back, I'll be investigating law and order before Meghan meets some beneficiaries of the Assets and Wealth Act. That's all coming up tonight on the National Nightly News. Alan James. I'm Alan James. Alan James. Alan James is right. Alan James is right. I'm Alan James. Alan James is right in front of you. I don't want to scare you, but you should be scared. There must be something in the food! I don't want to upset you, but you should weep for the world. They're gonna take you. Oh, sweet grandma. And I don't mean to shock you, but... You need to wake up! I'm Alan James, and I'll slap you so hard with the truth, you'll still be picking facts out of your face the following Wednesday! Alan James, coming to a city near you. Check local press for dates and times. Welcome back. In our second segment, we're going to be taking a deep dive into the state of law and order in our country. Advance have already tasked what they are calling a solutions team to move this serious social problem to the top of the list. Tonight, we go behind the headlines to meet the people who live with the criminal justice system every day of their lives. First up, we have Gregory Judge, a lawyer who sees the problems close up on the front line. Can you hear me, Gregory? Yes, I've got you, Jeremy. Thanks for having me. What's it like on the front line of the hard face of the cold hand of justice? Well, as you can imagine, Jeremy, we are massively understaffed in this country. Uh, we're working every hour we can just to try and cope with the caseloads on our desks. Which must affect the quality of support you can offer. Well, we can barely keep up with demand, Jeremy. Uh, there just simply isn't enough being done at a systemic level to relieve the problem. Greg. We need more support from ministers. We... Uh, what are you doing? 
We need change at a structural level, I'm Jeremy. leaving, Greg. Not a good time, darling. It never is, is it? I'll be at my mother's. No, just hang on. The problem isn't a local one, Jeremy. It's nationwide. Just give me five minutes. I'm talking to Jeremy Donaldson. Oh, have you mentioned your affairs? No. Well, it, uh, the affairs of the Justice Department that we should be concerned about... Hello, Mr. Donaldson. <laughs> Hello, Mrs. Judge. We need... Uh, we need legislation to relieve the pressure on our public service. Sorry servant. to interrupt the news, Mr. Donaldson. Can I have a moment to tell my husband I'm leaving him? Yes, I uh, totally understand. Quite the picture of a burdened legal sector there. Gregory Judge, thank you for joining us. Next, I'm joined by Police Chief Constable Bob Peel, a man with a very different perspective on our nation's crime. Do you think there's a problem with the system, Bob? I'm sure we all do, Jeremy. I'm sure we all long for a return to the days when you could safely walk the streets of your community at night, looking in through windows and generally enjoying your neighbours without the risk of being terrorised by some thug with a knife. Uh, or kosh. So you feel the streets simply aren't safe anymore? Where have we gone wrong, Bob? Well, that's not a simple question, Jeremy, but I think it all comes down to moral decay. We've diluted our culture and lost touch with what it means to be a citizen of this once great country. Also, as the vicar noted in Sunday's sermon, we probably shouldn't have banned hanging. And to what do you attribute this moral decay? Foreigners, gays and gypsies mainly. It's all in the Bible. Look, Leviticus clearly states that... Oh, bugger a moment. Jeremy, a bloody gimp's escaped. <laughs> Delia? Delia, could you give me a little help, please, dear? Uh, as I was saying, Jesus didn't like immigrants much, did he? And just to be clear, you think it's the immigrants who are responsible for the moral oh, yes. decay? Absolutely, Jeremy. Uh, back in your box, Clive. Back in your box. Delia, I really could use a little help with this. Oh, sorry, darling. I was spaying the badgers. Yes, yes. I'm talking to Jeremy Donaldson. Clive, could you put him back oh. in his box? Oh, Clive, you know it's Wednesday. <clears throat> And whose responsibility is it to make a change, Bob? Well, it is certainly not the responsibility of the decent, good, white people Darling, of this... where's the padlock? Oh, hold on just a moment. Oh, Clive, this simply won't do naughty, 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 naughty. Uh, Clive, I am not having this again. Mummy, so get back and open your naughty, you piece of As I was saying, Jeremy, moral decay. Crime is the responsibility of the criminal, no one else. Look, everyone has a sob story, but we don't all end up as barbarians, do we? Look, when our daughter Alice comes home with an A minus, does she go on a killing spree? No, she takes three of her pills and hides under the stairs like a normal child. Thank you, Bob. Bob Peel there, really locking down the police's position on morality for us. And finally tonight, hopefully uninterrupted, it's time to get to the heart of the matter. Tony Dawson has recently been released from prison after serving three years for aggravated assault burglary and menacing a swan. He's agreed to talk to us today, which is also, I believe, his birthday. Many happy returns, Tony. Cheers, Jez. Call me Titwag, Everybody else does. No, I'm not going to be doing that. Can you tell us what it's like in prison, Tony? Titwag, Hey! <laughs> Prison's a mixed bag. Structure's quite nice, but it's a constant battle against institutionalization, as you can imagine. And obviously, Titwag quite hard to come by. I'm picking up that you're not alone there, Tony. Titwang. <laughs> yeah, sorry, my friends are throwing me a surprise party. Good bunch of lads. Okay, well, we're trying that you get back to that party as soon as possible. First, let me ask you this. Do you feel that your time spent in prison helped to rehabilitate you in any way, Tony? Titwang, Tony! <laughs> I don't think it's as easy as that, Jez. It's open! I think asking that is an oversimplification. It sounds like it's getting quite busy there, Tony, but uh, let's try and soldier on. Since leaving custody, have you been able to find a new job? Yeah, all the boys are here. It's Big Chris, oi, oi. Little Chris, oi, oi. and Vampire Chris. This one's here. Yeah. One sec, love. Tip away on the news. Rehabilitation's difficult with the current system, Jez. It's just not set up for it, you know? It's inherently unjust. It's open! So, do you feel tempted to... I'm sorry, <laughs> who's this now? You are joking. Chrissy Free by only got Mr. Fancy, oh? Did Not now, fellas, I'm on the news. It's... 
It seems like we've caught you at a bad time. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, I can't really hear you, mate. It's getting a bit busy here. Jesus. Yes, we uh, seem to be losing the signal no. here, Tony. Hey, las bolitas! Well, we're just trying to get that signal back. I think we... Yes, Tony? Tony, I mean, we're literally away for two seconds. How has this happened, Tony? Can you hear me? Well, we seem to have lost our train of thought there a little. Hopefully you, the viewer at home, have managed to glean a broader understanding of the serious and complex issues around law and order. After the break, Megan will be live with some plucky young thespians. Don't go away. We'll be back after these messages. Welcome to Crazy Neil's Crazy Pre-Christmas Sofa and Chair Deals. It's a steal with Crazy Neil. We don't care if you've been naughty or nice. We got green sofas, red sofas, brown cushions, pink cushions. You've got a grey sofa. We've got a great sofa. In a grey, a brown, a pink, a yellow, a purple. Neil's deals are unreal. You've got people coming over at Christmas. You've got Nan. She's going to leave a stain on the sofa. You don't want to sit on this white sofa. She's going to have to sit on the dark sofa. This is a deal with Neil Appeal. You want to throw? Throw your money at us. We'll give you a leather sofa for a price that is just crazy. If you've got lightning, strike it. Then strike whilst the lightning is hot. You've got a disused sofa. We don't care if it's smelly. Dug in front of your telly. Full of welly. We'll take that shit away. Don't make a meal out of it. Make a deal out of it. We got a big ass deal on a big ass chair. We've got white chairs, blue chairs, stools, inflatable chairs. This is a crazy deal with meal appeal. You don't want no lame ass chair. You want a great chair. We had a man come down the other day and he brought in his young daughter and he wanted her to have the best chair. We got those chairs, we got none of those chairs. We got tall chairs, chairs on wheels, wheelchairs. We got chairs for twins, chairs made out of steel, chairs that are steel and a deal. We got those chairs. You want crazy? We got crazy. Crazy Neil's got crazy deals. You want a toilet? We can do you a toilet. We can do you a toilet next to a chair. We can do you a chair next to a toilet. Hell, we can even do you a toilet chair. Do you come on down? You bring your ass. We got it. You want it. You want it. We got it. You want it. You pay us. You want it. We got it. You want it. You want it. We got it. You pay us. Welcome to Black. I'm Megan Wolfe. And on tonight's Culture Spot, I'll be chatting with one of the first beneficiaries of the Assets and Wealth Act, a team of inspiring young people from Scritchford Sixth Form College, who today received a grant from Advance to take their play, Hey, Friendship, on a tour of local secondary schools. Welcome to you all. Well, let's start with you two, Harriet and Charlotte Winstanley-Hamilton. Girls, you must be thrilled. We are, Megan. We're overwhelmed, to be honest. <laughs> and I believe you two are sisters, is that right? Yes, Charlotte's my oldest. I'm the older, more popular one. <laughs> Only joking. Harriet and Trey were really the ones who came up with the whole idea. Yeah. So, Harry and I were shooting the breeze in the cafeteria and I said, hey, let's actually do something. So I went to look for a drama teacher. Uh, but she'd been laid off due to budget cuts. Fortunately, I directed a pantomime when I was at university, so, so I knew the ropes as it were. Oh, right, yes, but you're the maths teacher, aren't you? Uh, yes, that's me, Jeff Algebra, maths teacher. <laughs> maths is really important. Oh, thanks, Steve. Maths is really important. Yeah, thanks, Steve. As is theatre. It's one of the oldest art forms in history, Aristotle believed. I just think that when we travel around all these problem schools and the poor kids see us, they say, hey, I really want to be like those attractive kids. And that's a very beautiful and powerful thing. We touch our audiences and they touch us right back. I suppose with a surname like Algebra, there was really only one choice of career for me. <laughs> My wife, Angela, and I, we often laugh about it. <laughs> Angela Algebra. Yes. <laughs> we just want to bring a bit of song and joy into people's lives. And teach people about the difficult issues. The issues in the play are what really matter. And I think you're going to be showing us an extract from this play, aren't you? Yeah. That's right. To put into context, I play a young first year who's having some troubles at school. Her character doesn't actually have a name, yeah? Because in a way, she's like all, all of us. us. It's like a metaphor. Maybe she's you at home, or like, maybe she's you, Megan. Maths is really important. Yeah, thanks, Steve. <laughs> Put it in, Coach. Yes, thanks, Steve. <laughs> right, well, I'm going to have a little chat with your teacher while you run off and get ready. I can't wait to see it. <laughs> That's it, that way. <clears throat> 
So, Jeff, when did you first hear about the grant? Uh, two days ago. A letter from Advance arrived at the school. Now, the headmaster thought it was all a prank, but his secretary retrieved it from his bin and brought it to me. Wow, how did you react? I also <laughs> threw it in the bin. But then Harriet and Trey rescued it and uh, they, they rang the number at the bottom of the page and next thing you know, we're on tour. Wow. Well, I think we can all guess which way you'll be voting from now on. Do you know what? It's funny because Angela and I don't usually vote. We were not very political. I'm a mathematician, of course, and she's a paraplegic mainly, but we did used to watch that Peter Clements DIY show back in the day. And so we thought, uh, why not? Let's have a go with this old democracy thing. Okay. And here we bally well are. <laughs> Good stuff. F so let's have a look at a short section of Hey, Friendship. Dear Diary, I'm not sure I can take another day at this school. Another day of tears. 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 Another day of fears. 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 But still I walk the corridors alone, alone. Dreading what might be around every corner. What's around the corner? What's around the corner? What's around the corner? Oh, hi Gary. Oh heavens no, it's Gary the Fist. Gary, Gary the Fist. Going somewhere little first year? Great, I've been looking for some poor victim to bully all morning. But will this make me feel better about my violent father? Violent father. Excuse me, I'm late for maths. It's my favourite subject and so important. Uh, maths is for losers. What? Maths is for losers. My arm's stuck, coach. Just keep going for f***ing. Right, uh, uh, maths is for losers. Now, give me your lunch money. Double lunch for me today, but... Why am I only truly happy when I'm eating? Not today, Gary the Fist. What do you mean, not today? Who are you? Oh, my arm's free coat. Brilliant, keep going. Right, uh, uh, who are you to stand up to me? I'm Gary the Fist. And you're just a sad little girl with two gay dads who's all alone. That's where you're wrong, Gary the Fist. These are my two new friends. Vanessa is captain of the netball team. Yeah. And Blake owns a motorbike. Yeah. But, but, I can't fight all three of you. And I don't have any friends of my own. Take a look at me. Take a little look at me. shouldn't exist but that's just prejudice and I'd do better if you knew the way that I became Gary, Gary the, the Fist, Fist. Women is 
is wrong. I guess life's pretty hard on a council estate. 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 It's so damn hard on a council estate. Thankfully, that's all we have time for tonight on the National Nightly News. Join us tomorrow night for all the headlines from across the country. My name's Jeremy Dalton. Have a peaceful night. Why bother strengthening your body when you can strengthen your face? We believe your skin deserves the best, so the new formula actively removes harsh chemicals from your skin. The high salt content actually pulls the dihydrogen monoxide right from your pores to give you the crisp, brittle skin you've come to expect. New Judicochon will revitalize the appearance of the strength of your face's skin. 41% of women we surveyed said they loved their visible flakes. And seven out of ten dentists would recommend it. Judica Shaw. Judica Shaw. Because we said so. Judica.